Hello there and welcome to another cool smartphone video with me Gary. Today we're going to be having a look at the Huawei Mate S that was released back in the beginning of September at IFA and we're just going to uh, dive right in. So as you can see here I have got a lock code but I've also set up the fingerprint. Now the finger I'm using is this finger here. So let's just tap it on the back there and you can see straight away it has opened up. Now this is pretty quick. Um, I've been pretty impressed with the fingerprint sensor. I haven't had any misreads or many misreads. Um, nowhere near as many as I was getting with the OnePlus 2. So the phone runs a version of Android 5.02 I believe and it is also running the skin of Emotion UI on the top of it so if we now tap down here I had the settings opened recently so we'll pop in and have a look as you can see there it's EMUI 3.1 and we're running a high silicon Kirin 3.935 with 3 gig of RAM and this is the 32 gig version and it's actually 5.11, not 5.02. Apologies for the misnomer there. This is currently running on the EE network. And I have been using it uh, as my main device with said SIM card. Now while we're in the settings, there's a couple of little things in here that are not available in typical Android settings. First things first, you do have the ability to search settings. And then when you dive into various different features such as the ad the more data settings, you've got Link Enhance, which will enhance your signal and your Wi-Fi networks and make it easier to find and connect to them. Home screen style allows between a simple and a standard. Standard is uh, your normal EMUI and Simple is large buttons, no widgets as far as I'm aware. Tap and pay is built in. And you've got notification manager, you've got protected apps. This is something that's very relevant on all Chinese um, devices. Under apps, you've got the ability to go in and uh, configure your call, your message and email. And you've also got the ability to see what they call networked apps. Now networked apps are how the apps are using the uh, data available. So you can actually dictate whether or not an app can use mobile data or Wi-Fi or both. Quite a nice touch and quite a good way of saving data. And here you've got some smart assistance um, instructions such as the one-handed UI, dual window, and uh, navigation bar switch, and motion control as well. In here you've also got the ability to um, enable various different features. So smart cover I do have turned on, as um, I do also have the Huawei smart cover, which I have been using. And it will unlock the screen when you open it. And then a couple of other bits and pieces. Let's just check on update just to make sure there isn't any updates available. Now I'm not connected to Wi-Fi. This is also a little bit different. You have a different notification drawer from usual and your shortcuts is a little bit different. So let's go in and have a look at the Wi-Fi. Um, and it has now connected or it just disconnected there. Uh, so we'll now go back and check the update and I believe there will not be any updates available and you can ask it to do local updates off um, an SD card or um, package updates and various things like that so quite handy. Coming out of the settings we have our EMUI uh, launcher here. Now this has developed slightly from previous Huawei devices I've tested in the way that you now have the ability to add widgets. 
So you can see up here we've got a weather widget, we have a music widget here, the Google search widget. You've still got folders in a very similar manner to how they were before. And you've still got every icon displayed due to the lack of an app drawer. Um, I still prefer the app drawer style. Um, so I'm a bit remiss about the fact that that, that isn't there. But I have uh, learned to cope with it. Now you can see there that it has just uh, had that little mirror effect over some of the apps. Now what this indicates is that these are new apps on the phone. So it's a useful way of finding what your new apps are. Um, and it's a nice little touch that they've added in here. All these other ones on this page I have used. Um, I also have played around with the Google Now Launcher on here and it works perfectly well. The only thing is, and I'll open it just to show you, the only thing um, that's in here that I did have issue with is the fact that the Google App Launcher, although it will allow you to use a more Google-esque interface, the icons are still redesigned in Huawei's icon set. Um, which isn't the end of the world, but I just prefer the way that Google, uh, the Google icons as pure icons. So you can see there is some preloaded content here, Todoist being one of them. And then uh, you've got a Vmall, which is their own web store. And uh, there's a couple of games preloaded on here and uh, some other bits and pieces. The preloaded content uh, can all be deleted, which is nice to see. Um, however, again, I would just prefer it wasn't there. But hey, nothing's perfect in this world. So at least you do have the ability to get rid of it. With regard to the phone's performance, I have uh, benchmarked it and that will be available in the full review on coolsmartphone.com. A um, couple of nice little features if we go into Phone Manager. It gives us the ability to scan the phone and it will see if there's anything that can be optimized, um, any apps that can be closed down. So I've got 10 apps that I can clean up to free some memory. That'll free up some memory for me. Um, I've got some junk I can clean out as well. And then if I were to turn power saving mode on, it will allow me to get better power. So um, that's now my phone optimized. However, I'm going to turn the power saving mode back off. Or not. So um, that's a nice wee touch. Now, um, another little thing we've got is Traffic Manager. This allows you to actually not just see the traffic data you've used, but also allows you to break it down as to what apps have been using it, how much has been used on 4G, and what has been used in mobile hotspots as well. Um, a little bit more in-depth than you get in the normal uh, settings on Android. You've got a file, commander, a file browser in there, Notepad Themes. Now Themes is something that Huawei are heavily into. So this allows you to change the entire look and feel of the phone uh, with a very simple touch. And you can download lots of different style themes. Now that magazine unlock that we just saw pop up there, if I now lock the phone and then I go to unlock without using the fingerprint reader, it will come up with a different picture on the screen every time, as if you are flicking through a magazine. Now it's a nice way of having a new image um, every now and again, so I don't really mind that. What I'm going to do now is go into the camera. Now the camera itself, uh, really, I'm not going to be able to justify it in this short overview, but the camera itself has got a lot of 
interesting features. You can see that the autofocus is pretty good at picking up things. But you've also got various different modes. You've got light modes, light painting there, which will allow you to pick up various things such as car trails, silky water, light graffiti, star track. This has all been seen on um, previous Huawei devices. Beauty mode will enhance um, your skin, so to speak. So let's ramp that up to 5, up to 10. Um, we're just going to take a picture there, which will be quite tricky. Okay. And what it should do is it should rule out the imperfections. So if we now go and view that picture. Again, this is designed for your face, though. It has kind of got rid of some of the uh, fingerprint ridges. But you can see here, this is actually a really good example of the camera, that the ridges on my finger just there are visible. So the camera, um, I'm not going to dwell on it, but the camera is really quite impressive. Um, I would rate it as being up there with my Xperia Z3 with regard to the quality. So, there's a wee picture of a pebble there. Okay, photo does what it says on the tin. You can play around with the exposure values just by tapping on the focal point video again fairly simple video interface and you have got movable focus so if we put something else in the background there like this little piece of string so I can either focus on the actual rock or I can focus on the knot of the string and then time lapse is very very similar to what you would expect of any time lapse photography on any phone um, other features of the camera you've got all these other modes as shown here and then you've got your actual settings where you can even go in and you can play around even more uh, it does have optical image stabilization and indeed it does have object tracking and stabilizer so the camera really isn't bad. Um, you've also got this other thing where you can add filters. Uh, there's lots to play around with in the camera and I can't really do it justice in this short video. Um, there's your notification management there. Pretty, uh, pretty good and double tapping will indeed take you into the content. So that is a very, very brief overview of the Huawei Mate S. Um, we've seen a lot of the, hard, the software that it is bringing to the table on previous Huawei such as the Huawei P8 and the Huawei P8 Max but also on the Huawei P7 and P6 and it has built on those previous devices which is good to see that Huawei are developing over time. So, if there's any questions about this, please feel free to pop them in the comments below. Um, and if you like this video, please like it. If you didn't like it, uh, then please also pop a comment down below stating why. If you want to see more content like this from CoolSmartphone.com, please subscribe at the link over there. And um, feel free to check out the full written review on the website. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.